Welcome to Meet the Fleet video, finally. I'm so excited to be able to share this video with you guys. Um, as I know, a lot of people have been asking it, even from 2019 when I first started social media, people are wanting to know what we've actually got in the fleet because we have five different brands of machines. We've got trucks and dumpers. There's a mix match, so people want to know exactly what it is. So here it is, I'm gonna to explain to you what we've all got. And I'm going to start with no other than my own machine. Well, it's not my own machine, it's still the company's machine, but I've made it my own. So this is my KX088-4-2. You got that? This here tells me it's a 2021, and we got it in April 2021. It was brand spanking new. We got this basically an upgrade from the old one. So we had a KX088-4, and this was the slash two, this was the one up from it. Um, the old one needed replaced and it was a no-brainer to go for the same again. It was a good, reliable machine, never had any issues with it and a, a good size. We do like our eight-ton machines. The thing what a lot of people notice about the majority of our machines, but this machine is how wide the tracks are on it and it's on steel tracks. Now you'll notice throughout my videos that a lot of my machines are on steel tracks. The reason for this being is we're in West Coast Scotland, the hills or even this mud here, you can see. If that was rubber, it would be spinning. This machine has got 600 steel pads on it at the moment. We do have a rubber set for this one back home, which very, very rarely gets put on, um, but it has been done a few times. We also have this R3 roto tilt fitted to it. Now this, in fact, is the only machine with a tilt rotator on it. Yes, you'll see in the other videos we have tilting buckets, etc., but this is the only tilt rotator, and I'm the only one who can work it. Dad did have a shot on it at the start um, when we first got it and he did get used to it but he's not been on it in over a year now. The machine has got 895, if you can see that with the glare, 895 hours on it and I must say I have, um, I've done all them hours, well, the majority of them hours. This is the cab, on here we've got a screen, this one's for the roto tilt. This is a camera, it's a bit bulky and obviously the roto tilt levers on it but yeah nice spacious wee cab in this one the type of work this machine gets used for is basically anything house sites roads cable tracks water tracks like basically anything we do i find it really really useful around house sites with the roto tilt um so you can sit in the same position instead of tracking and the way on the tracks it's all on the roto tilt which i find a big big bonus round about house sites but basically anything you'll see in this one i have added the wrap on it um, it's got Dipper's name, it is, Dipper's name on the door, it's missing the mirror, I still need to replace that. Nice and pink. This is it, like, that's all the original paint on the bottom half as well, there's no wrap on that and there's one scratch which Dad had done it when it was like basically brand new. Um, but I think that's pretty good going and well looked after for two years old. Now, in this machine, I've got my fancy light bar fitted. It's S Type X Mit X. There it is up there, you can see what it is. I think it finishes the machine off just lovely. I'll put a link below for that if any of you are interested in getting them because I'm blinded, it's daylight, and I am actually blinded by that light. So you should see what it's like in the dark. Maybe you'll notice it in one of my other videos at another time. They do all custom ones, they do any colour, any shape, any like anything you want basically you can get them made for yourselves. My favourite feature about this machine has got to be the rototil. I just love the setup. I love it with the machine. It works well together. The worst bit about this machine is this silly looking aircon box just stuck on top of the machine. Not only does it look bad, but look what it sat right next to your ear. So you're sitting in the cab and you've got the aircon on. It is whining like mad right in your ear. That's my biggest eh about this machine. Let's go on to the next one. And just like that, we're on to the next one. This is our Terex, it's a TB900. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. You know what this does, it's a dumper, it's a nine ton dumper. It's old as, I don't even know what age it is. It's old enough to have the wrong colors because it's still painted yellow. And um, we use it for, for all work. I feel like it works good with the nine ton and six ton, you can get plenty in it and plenty shifted. Um, you can also get the six and nine ton dumper on the lorry at the same time. One thing I love about it, the big skips, you can fill it right up. One thing I don't like about it is it's got no cab. <laughs> Fun fact, we did have a cab dumper last year. 
last year, um, but we got rid of it. It's too much money sitting about for what we actually need it for. So, yeah, we're looking at skins and get on with the job basically with these ones. So this is a Hyundai, which you guys have probably seen if you've been watching my videos, this appearing quite a lot. It's a Hyundai 140 LC-9A, which means it's a 14 tonne machine. This machine is a 2014 and we got it brand spanking new. The reason we got it was because we had a 14 tonne Volvo beforehand. It was a EC140, I think that what it was. This is the one basically since I've started, I learned on the Volvo. And then this is one I've done my majority of learning on. So it was just basically an upgrade. We went for Hyundai because the local dealer, dad liked them, good machine, that kind of thing. This machine, I've been on it quite a lot, but I, I, at the start, I didn't really be spending a lot of time with it. When dad first started, the only machines we had was a five, two five ton, six ton Kubotas and this machine, well, a 14 ton machine. Through the years we have kind of changed a wee bit, we, not too much though, we got rid of the two old Kubotas and bought our first brand new Kubota um, when I first started working with Dad in 2012, then we had this one, so it was kind of just the two machines, then we got a 8 tonne Hitachi as well, which we did not keep for long because that was, I don't see much about, bad about machine, but that 8 tonne Hitachi was the worst machine I've ever operated, I actually get a sore arm just thinking about how uncomfortable it was. Uh, I know now different models brand uh, d different models of machine and they're, they're great machines. It was just that one machine was a headache. It gets used for basically bigger house sites, bigger jobs. Um, up, we find a lot of people stick 14, 20, 22 ton machines on a job that can get done by an 8 ton and there's no room to move around. Um, so this is just basically for the wide open, like this big house site, shed site I'm doing just now. Before that, I was on another big um, house site, a huge big house site, and a lot of rock breaking. Um, it has done roads and stuff before. It's done hydro schemes. Maybe it's done, this machine would have done three hydro schemes, if I'm right saying that. Definitely two, possibly three. Um, actually, maybe four, possibly four, um, for lifting the pipes up and getting the pipes in and digging the, the tracks and stuff like that, as well as doing the dams. So it does get used for a lot. Obviously, it's on steel tracks as most 14 tons are, um, have a look inside the cab. This machine tells you here how many hours are on it and it's 4,711. <clears throat> I actually didn't think it was as much as that, but there we have it. That is the most hours we have on any machine, so it has been pretty well worked for us. In between jobs a lot of people would take the machine away but thankfully we're in a position where we can have one sitting say i was doing foundations it would dig foundations and then we'd have to take it away till the brickies put the block work in whereas i can leave it there that extra week instead of shifting it to another job and shifting it back and then that's money shifting it about um to go and put the floors in so within that week space i can jump onto another machine and do another job so very lucky and able that we're in the position to do that and that's why we have six machines and only three operators. Um, the Hitachi which you'll see a wee bit that doesn't really get used for much we basically bought that because whenever we went to hire a mini machine we could not get them anywhere they were disgusting um, basically we couldn't get them when we needed them so we just got one and we've been using it out of the house but anyway you'll see that. This model is very much outdated to the, the new model of um, Hyundai the HX like very, they're very, very different. After I had that demo 220 back in Jul June, July last year, this one is like moving back in time. We always thought this one was um, very tight and stuff like that, but once you jump into a new one and come back into the old and you're like, it is actually getting a bit, a bit worn now. However, our majority of the work is for the eight tons and the six ton machine. So just now it's not feasible to swap this one in, but maybe next year. So it's got a start button, this one. and it's all here on the screen. You'll have just the usual stuff on it. There's nothing wrong with it at all, apart from it needs a good dust. Um, I do love the cab. I love this seat cover. So this seat cover, we actually got it off Young Plant, who, that was the dealer at the time. And I can see it's so comfy. The original seat under that is just, that'll be like new as well when we go. A wee bit 
faded, but this has been on it the whole time and it's it's really, really comfy. It just fits you well in here. Um, to be honest, that's probably my favourite bit about this machine. I do like it all, but that's just something that stands out. What I'm not so keen on, um, but it's fine when you get used to it, is the hydraulics. Like, the levers are so responsive. So if you're in, say, the Kubota and you jump into here, you go and slow down and you go to stop here, but you end up going flying past because they're really, really sensitive. Like, it does take you a while to get used to it again. But that can be good for some other things. It just takes a wee bit of time to get used to it. Back in 2021, there was one slight problem with this machine. The slow motor went, which was not ideal. Um, it's down the back, but that got fixed pretty quick. Um, we got the parts, no bother. And it turned out to be a problem with this model of machine, and it was really quite popular. But since that, they've taken it on board and updated it, and obviously that's not going to happen again. Um, also, the wiper. Um, it's an intermittent wiper, which most machines have nowadays. Um, we did have a few problems with that. Basically, there's a motor inside there too. They've, it's also got two fuses, so it seems to be a bit complicated just for being a window wiper. There's a fuse in there and there's one um, below the seat or somewhere, somewhere ridiculous as well. Uh, but that being said, it's never, never really let us down apart from that slow motor, but do you know what? These things are going to happen. It's been the new model. It's a lot better. These things have been brought forward and fixed. So yeah, nice big machine is the Hyundai, and of course it's Dipper. Dipper's favourite because he likes a big cab. Again, the back of it for the size of it and the hours of it is basically immaculate. You'll see one scratch around here, which I do claim the blame for. That was me and that's the only one I've ever put in a machine and what it was, was actually the worst ever because it was fencing. I was um, taking out stumps, it was a big deer fence which I was slowing on and obviously he, he wouldn't know it was there because it's so, it's so thingy but it did scrape all the paint off. Anyone who ever gets our machines after us that we put for sale always say it's um, basically a good deal because they're so well looked after. You might see in there, there's a grease gun in the cab. Usually that should be in a toolbox, but that was me, I had it there because it makes me get out and grease the breaker when the breaker was on more often rather than having to jump around the air every time. Um, they're well greased, they're well maintained, there's hardly any scratches on them. And really, when you are selling them, uh, a 2017 Takuchi and a 2017 Takuchi with the same hours on it, One's been wrecked, got paint scratched everywhere, and one's absolutely immaculate. Your price wise, there's not going to be much of a difference. Um, so they are really a steal to get um, when they're when they're kept well. So let's go find the next machine. Where where will this one be hiding? And this little baby is our Hitachi. It is a 26 U, which is just shy of three ton machine. It's telling me here it's a 2018 machine. We got it, I'm wanting to say last year as well, 2022, but it could have possibly been the end of 21. I'm not quite sure, I'd have to check with Dad about that one. I am very, very, very rarely in this machine. To be honest, it's been used out here at Dad's old house, which if you've been watching my channel, you'd have seen the, the old house that Dad's got, and this is just sitting here. It's been actually loading the bell mixer for concrete for the house, digging trenches, um, doing that kind of work. The reason we bought it was, I think I said before, we couldn't get any machine at the time and it's also very, very handy to just throw in the back of the pickup and trailer and take it to a job. People got choke drains, that kind of thing. Let's check out the cab. This one actually needs a clean too, to be honest. This has just been, this is the most neglected machine that we have. Um, it's standard basic. There's nothing fancy about it at all. There's 1,656 hours. Now, it's pretty embarrassing showing you the side of that cab because it is pretty minging. Um, there's no excuse for it whatsoever. Um, however, when you're busy running about and concreting and doing other stuff, not one of us operators are in it all the time, which does mean it gets a little bit neglected. But also very, very handy little machine. My favourite thing about the machine is probably the size of it, to be honest. Um, like any little mini machine, it's so handy to throw on the digger at uh, the back of the trailer and pick up and go rather than using a shovel. And one thing I really, really, really do not like about this machine is this wee step here. 
it's doing no benefit whatsoever. I actually think it's a hazard. When you go to put your foot there, you can easily misjudge it and uh, fall out. There's no need for it. And it's just, that's my biggest ick about this machine. The Hitachi is actually more like a wee playing machine for my son, who's five year old. Um, when we're on our private ground, it is our own machine, which is owned. He does have a wee play about on it. And I think it's very um, important to get the younger generation in from such a young age. My boy will know not to go near. He, he knows so much. Um, I'd much rather he gets learnt rather than running up to the machine and approaching it from the wrong way. Um, he knows where to stand when someone else is operating. He knows to lift a dead man. He knows to make eye contact with the operator. He knows so much stuff at such a young age. I just think it's very, very important. So <clears throat> I'm happy enough to let my wee boy into this with the revs down in our own ground and um, being supervised, of course. As you'll see throughout my videos, we are not afraid of switching brands. One thing that you will notice about me though, is my workwear. I am always in Revolution Race and have been since 2019. It's the most comfortable and durable workwear I've found and it fits so well. Revolution Race has kindly sponsored me for this video, which is absolutely fantastic. It means it's given me the opportunity to take the day off to go around and film all these machines for you. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have got around to doing this. They've also been very generous in giving me a discount code for all you guys. You'll see it on screen now and I'll put the link in the bio with the discount code in case you missed it. So thank you very much to Revolution Race for that and thank you for making such durable workwear. And this is our Cabelco SK75. Yes, another 8 tonne machine. Um, it is on, again, 600 steel pads. There's a blade. This machine is a 2021 machine but we got it brand new last year in 2022, um, April 2022. The reason I remember this was, the reason it's got the Digger Girl stickers, my old logos on it, was it was bought brand new, then it was taken to Scott Plant, which is a plant show in Edinburgh in Scotland. So that's why it's got the Digger Girl stickers on it, just for a little bit more of ad advertising from where it was there. But in fact, it was a year old, but brand new when we got it. It was like last year's stock, basically. This machine did come with a full cage um, over the window. However, we've just not got around to taking this off yet. The top bit is at the house. Now, this machine has actually been fully on the hills since we got it. I've done a wee bit in it, but not much. It's been doing hill tracks, hill ditching, um, maintenance to, to the hillside, basically. Um, with the contracts we have. It is pretty minging round about it. It's just came home again today, um, finished a job and I'll be going away out again. I'll show you in the cab. Dad had this machine last, so I'm gonna have to give him a, for not giving it a sweet sweep out and a wee clean out. Um, if you watched my videos a few weeks ago, I did actually give it a wee clean out with Sandy's new stuff for him. He's not been keeping on top of it, neither he has. So this is the cab. I just left this jacket in there too. A nice big screen here. The camera system on this is pretty good. It's got one on the side and one on the back. This machine has 552 hours on it. I like this small touch here. Again, for being um, a year old, not a scratch on this one at all. Um, just, just mud. And that's really good going for the places this machine has been. It is um, pretty immaculate. It just needs, needs a dust down. One thing I don't like about this machine is probably the blade. I find it a little bit too small um, when it's down compared to the... I feel like everything just kind of tends to go over it. And my favourite feature about this machine is the cab is an 8 tonne machine, but the cab is the same as a 13 tonne machine. So the cab is extremely spacious inside there, as well as the comfort. Lovely cab. If you've been watching my video, this machine has had the shears on it most of the time. The shears can go in any eight ton machine, at, apart from the rototill, and they can go on the six ton also. We talked about shifting the pins with the saddle in one of my videos before as well. So it does get it does get put through its paces, this machine. It's so powerful and it's really, really 
like extremely quiet inside the cab and I'm comparing that to my Kubota what I'm on most of the time which whines away with the aircon and the hydraulics it's whiny machine that is silent it is amazing so yeah you're probably spotting my um, antique dumper in the background so come check this out with me now this old girl is a Benford it's a PT900 which means it's a nine ton dumper also, same as the Terex we have as well. However, I'm not gonna put an age on this. I'm, maybe we could play a wee game, maybe you can guess the age of it. Look at it, it has been battered and bruised, it's been put through the places. I, when we first, when I first started working with dad, it was in the Easter holidays. And in fact, I mean, I've just came out of school to give him a wee hand one day. But I remember him getting me to go up this wee embankment and down and it was tiny and I was scared of doing it in this thing because I thought, I just a wee girl sitting up there and it was this absolute beast. But I reckon this is one thing we are never going to sell. We've had it that long. We've had it since, well I've been with dad 11 years and he's had it longer than that. So we have had it a very, very long time. The reason we've kept this machine, obviously it doesn't owe us anything. Bought it way back all them years ago for, I don't even know how much it was. It was cheap anyway. Um, it doesn't owe us anything, we can put it to a job, it can sit for months, we're not worried about it making too much money because it does its job. Um, and every single time we go to it, the tyres can be flat, the skip can be full of water and it will still start. One thing I don't like about it is the seat is destroyed and you get a soggy bum, you've got to sit on something. And one thing I do like about it is it starts every time you go to it. I honestly reckon it just goes on hopes and dreams because every time you go to it it never lets you down. I would honestly dread to think how many hours are in both of our dumpers but it beats paying mental money for a cab dumper that sits there not doing much most of the time. I mean we're all about um, looking after equipment which is well looked after because it still goes after all these years but you've also got to justify having a £30,000 dumper with a cab that's going to sit there and maybe do one job every three months. That, that doesn't pay. This is Dad's Nissan Navara. It is a 2019 and he got this one brand new. But he did have a Toyota Hilux Invincible beforehand and that was a living plate and then he upgraded for the Nissan. He went for this because it was better value for money at the time um, and his pals had had them and they were good and reliable. He did want to get me one as well, but unfortunately for him, um, there was none when it hit lockdown hit and I was desperate for one, so I got the, I got the Hilux. You'll see the matching plates. This is a Jai, mine's the A. Now they are good sturdy, <laughs> look at that mat, man. They are good sturdy machines, um, <laughs> pickups even, too many machines in one day. Dad did go for the manual, he prefers that. But when he gets a shot on my one, he loves the automatic. He drove my pickup once and um, he ripped the mudguard off, so he's not really allowed in it. He can stick to his Nevada. He's done 62,000 miles on it. One thing I don't like about the pickup is it's not comfy. He's like, yeah, it's comfy. And I'm like, it is solid. The seats are absolutely solid. One thing I do like about it is it can pull. If you've got the pickup um, with the trailer on and a bit of weight in the back, it will go. There's no stopping it. Hilux, however, that's where it's a wee bit sluggish. The back of my pickup, um, as if you watched my video last week, you'd have seen that I could really do a set of drawers or something on it. Um, Dad done his own shelving. Now, it's not the tidiest, but it keeps everything in its places to stop sliding around. Usually it's um, stowed out with drums. So, you can put wee bits here to stop, like, just to sliding that wee bit. Pickups are the worst for, uh, for, for things sliding about. I just don't have as much stuff as him. He's got stuff there for everything as if anything's going to go wrong. Whereas I've got drums of diesel and a, a set of um, spanners and a shifter, a shovel. That's all I've got in mine. We do have two vans also. We've got this Mercedes VO van and we've got a Peugeot partner van. That's a standard van for the worker to use. And this was um, bought for one of the work, well for dad and one of the workers. Dad liked it, it's got a V6 engine in it. It goes like hell. Nice van, it's a, I want to say 2010. So it is getting old. Again, we've got the private number plate, just changed the 7 to an 8 there. Um, so nobody knows how old things are, apart from now, because I've told you. Got another wee van. We've also got um, 
an Argo, we've got two trailers and we've got a quad bike and we've got a wee um, buggy as well which was new in 2021. So that's most of the weird kind of stuff that we have and the bigger stuff. The pickups and stuff obviously don't make us any money but you do want a good reliable um, work car vehicle to get you to work and back. And this beauty here is one of our two lorries. This one is a project. It's a 143, it's a V8 and it's an NREG, which means it was 1996 year. So we bought this truck back in March 2021 and it came from South Wales. Um, it was a beaver tail, same as our other one. You can see the body over there, it was on the back. However, there was a bend, which you might have seen in my other video that I mentioned, and we are doing work to it. For this one, you're going to have to keep watching more because we actually don't know what we're going to do with it now. So you guys are just know just as much as me. We do have the new body there ready to put on it, the new chassis on it. However, we've been given a bit of advice what says we'd have to put a sub chassis on it. And then it's made our minds just think, well, we just put it back to the original unit. Um, so you're going to fall, have to follow me more to see what we're going to do with this thing. And I can guarantee if it's going back to unit, it'll be going down the road in the next month or so. So stay tuned to see more about this. But let's go and have a jump in the cab. As you can see, the cab is in really good nick. It's all original and it's the way I plan to keep it. Um, I love it. I just love even coming in and the smell of it. I, I've totally lost, like, my heart was just out of it because it's been lying here for so long. It's been lying here two years, uh, two years in July. It's been lying in the same kind of position. So it's heartbreaking to see. Um, but now that we're starting to think about it a little bit more and we've got a kind of wee plan of actually what we're going to do, it's good. Um, however, I've just noticed the wee mice have been in at it, which is not good. I've just noticed it this second because there's this rag and it's chewed to bits. And they've been at the bloody curtains and they're in the back too. So we'll need to get a mouse trap in here ASAP. So the old girl obviously does not have a digital tachograph, she's got a manual one and this is the kilometres what are on it. It is 27 year old so the that's probably, most likely, been turned back over the years um, for different reasons. So I wouldn't actually say that was a genuine amount of what was actually on the clock. <laughs> The only thing we're going to have to change about this is, and it's not even changed, I think I'm just going to try and keep it as original as I can, is the seat. Now, a lot of lorry seats are like this, so so the guy who's hopefully going to do the truck, he can sort all this for me anyway. But we'll just hide that over for now. And for all you scanny guys watching here, you'll be wondering if there's stacks or side pipes on it. The answer is stacks. They're lying here, they will a million percent be getting put back on it. Um, there's there and the covers for them are lying over there in the grass. So they'll be getting put back on. This body was supposed to be sold, this old one. But yeah, you're going to have to stay tuned because honestly, I don't know what we're doing with it. Apart from the lorry, keeping the lorry as original as possible, we don't know if we're going to keep it, put it in a rigid or put it back to a unit. My favourite thing about the old girl is basically everything. I love everything about it. Um, there's nothing I don't like. I, I just love it. <laughs> um, but the thing that I don't like about it is that it's not on the road. And that's nothing to do with the lorry. That's just our fault. <laughs> so, yeah. Stay tuned to see more of the old girl and what we're going to do to it. I'll attach a wee video after this clip when it was running in 2021 so you can hear her and see her, what she's like, when she will be going. This here is our Scania, it's a six wheel beaver tail rigid lorry. It is a 09 plate, we got it, we only got it last year because our old one which was a V-Reg, a 2000, was getting 
very old and very rusty underneath, so we needed a replacement. Also, with the 143 being off the road, this fitted in well. We sourced it somewhere local to us, we knew the background history from it and it's been well looked after. However, the front grille needs replaced and I might have a wee surprise up my sleeve for you guys for that in the near future. You can see the body on it is absolutely minted, the floor is nice. I love this metal strip down here, so when you curl on your bucket round or whatever, it sits on there and not the wood, so the wood doesn't get damaged. There's also flip toe ramps, which we didn't have on our old truck, but um, I'm starting to really like them. It was also hydraulic rams we had on our old one, whereas this one is electric here. To be honest, I'm quite liking and enjoying the electric ones because um, you don't have to have the lorry running to operate them, which is nice. This is inside the cab. There's no bunk, it's a day cab, um, but there's still plenty of room, plenty of room for storage or jackets, and they were actually a machine what they was going to get handed back to a hire company, so got them. There is the kilometers on it there. This is a great wee lorry. A lot of people often ask us why we don't have a unit and trailer and the reason for that being is because usually it's just a 6 and 8 tonne we move. Now we don't move the 14 tonne, even though it can get shifted to this, we don't shift it, we tend to get someone else in to do it, unless it's a very short run. Because it is not nice shifting a 14 tonne in this thing, the swing on it is unreal. With the having a 6 and 8 tonne and the sites we go to, you can literally get this 6 wheeler to anywhere. You can get it up, even if you drop machine, you can lift the axle and you can turn it. Um, which is absolutely fab for where we go. If we were to have a unit, we'd have to have a really short trailer to get where we go, which isn't off the cards, like, but they're just really hard to come by. Now, there's one reason why our lorries aren't anything fancy. Like, they're, Yes, they're well looked after, they're inspected when they should be, they're road legal, all the stuff they should be. They're not probably looking up to the spec that we'd want them for now. Um, to be honest, the lorries don't make us any money whatsoever. They're just for our own use. It's a restricted license we've got and it is in my name, so we can only move our own stuff, which suits me fine, because trust me, after working all week, I did not want to be going to shift an old dumper that's broken down and have to drag it on or something. I've been there, I've done that. And I'd say to Dad, if I read you the operator's license, it's going in a restricted in my name, because we no, no, don't do that stuff anymore. So yeah, the lorries make us no money, um, and most of the time, it can sit here, it can sit here for three weeks. In fact, they can nearly go to the next inspection without um, without move it, turning a wheel, depending on what job's on. However, however, if we had to hire someone in to shift our machines, it, it would cost us a lot. Because sometimes in one week there might be five, or we want it right here, right now, we can just come get our own lorry and do it, rather than waiting for a loader or somebody to come and shift it. Oh, I can't do it till next week, I can't do it till then, we can just come to our lorry and get it done ourselves. So, although it doesn't, it doesn't make us money, it saves us money, if that makes sense. One thing I like about this truck is it's a good, reliable, scanny beaver tail. We get it where we want to and it's reliable. One thing I don't like about it is it is an automatic and I'm not keen having an automatic for what we do. Um, it seems to jump through gears, etc. I've driven many automatic lorries before and Scannies, Volvos, whatever, and they're all good. Um, my pickup's actually automatic, so it's not automatic what's the issue. It's just the gear system in this seems to be a bit jumpy. When we're up in like forest tracks and stuff like that, it's we just tend to put it into manual and just do it that way. But I've always been used to the old gear stick and the old 3 and the 143 also. So yeah, that's our truck. Our second truck, our daily, which doesn't get used, daily truck. This one here is our Takuchi. It's a 8 tonne one and it's a TB290. This machine is a 2015, although we got it in 2017. So it'll be six years to us this year. We bought this machine off a local dealer called Argyle Engineers. It's actually still in there. Argyle Engineers, um, they're a Takuchi dealer near us. And the reason we bought it was because we needed another machine and that was there at the time. Um, Cammy does our hoses and that anyway, so it was silly not to buy it. It was, a, it was a good deal and a great machine. The cab is lovely and spacious in here. You'll notice something with all the cabs that, although they're not sparkling, they're all well looked after. In fact, all the machines are as they're our own and we have a lot of pride in keeping them like that. This machine has 3,286 hours on it. You might notice in this machine that this bit is a different colour to this bit and that's because when we had bought it the back had been resprayed because it was all scratched. However it is immaculate up until this morning when it got dropped back off here 
and this is on it. That is six year old to us this year and look how immaculate it is. It was doing so well apart from this one, which is a wee bit heartbreaking, um, but these things do happen. It is a sore one. What happened there was the operator was on it, a very good operator. He was working in a really tight, confined space. He had banks and should have been watching them, were not watching them and slowed around and hit a rock. Now that's no fault of his own. Bank, the banksmen were there to look out for these kind of things and let it go. So whatever. But there's a the camera there, it's obviously not working. I don't know why, maybe it's just taking a while to load. I, I've not seen this machine since November last year, it's been on hire. And this machine is the only one that we have in rubber tra tracks. This will get used for if we're going on tar, concrete, um, roundabout house sites as well. It kind of gets used for everything apart from any wet, soggy ground. Um, obviously it's got a bit of wear on the tracks now. But apart from that, it's a, it's a good machine. The thing that I love most about, this is a bit funny this, because the thing I love most about Takuchi is how big and spacious the cab is. Um, but the thing I don't like about it is that because it's so big, I can't get the seat forward enough for my little short legs. So that's how far forward it goes, but when I'm tracking, like that's my legs at full reach to try and do that. Um, I always feel myself if you're going over bumps, my wee legs are like this. Um, Somebody did say that you can put it even further forward. I have yet to find it, so if you guys know how to, comment below please and tell me how to put it forward a bit. But yeah, overall, again, great machine. We've never ever had any problems with this. In fact, I'll lie, we had one problem, this electrical switch here, which is hardly a problem. Just dodgy wiring. This here is my everyday girl. It is a Toyota Hilux Invincible. Um, it's a 68, which is a 18 plate, and I got it in July 2020. I have done a little bit of mods to it. I've done the the grill. I think that was just off eBay, eBay, and my own private number plate on it. Um, me and Dad have matching plates. Apart from his stage J at the start, and mine's A, and mine's actually got glitter through it, which is really cool because it adds that wee girly touch to it. I also put the amber lights up the side, but unfortunately I can't show you because the auto electrician I used in her guile was absolutely terrible and none of them work. So highly do not recommend to using them. I do have my Digger Girl sticker in the back, but that will have to be upgraded and it severely needs a wash. You know what it's like winter spec and on the hills. This is inside. I've got my wee digger that I probably shouldn't have there, but it's been there forever and there is 59,000 miles on the clock. Um, I've had Hilux since 2015. I had one similar, the same before, exactly the same, but it was an older version and it was a 65 plate. I do like it. It's very reliable. We've got the BF Goodrich uh, tyres on, which we need for obviously some of the places that we go with them. No, it means no punctures and stuff like that. So I do like my pickup. Favourite thing about it is um, comfort, I think. Like I've sat in Rangers, Dad's got the Nissan, I've sat like in Azusa's is so tinny. Everyone's got their own opinion, but mine is, I love the comfort in that. The only thing I don't like about it is the, it's sluggish. There's not enough pull in it. And this is our Kubota 060-5. And this is our newest member of the fleet. This machine is a 2022 and we got it in the end of January 23. So it's just a few weeks old to us basically. We got this machine because we had the KX57-4 beforehand um, and it needed traded in. I'd done a lot of hours and we had had it about four years, I think. So it was an upgrade um, and obviously the 60 was a new model out. Um, I've only been on it for about a week and it is a really nice machine to operate. You'll notice it does have the steel tracks on a six-ton machine. Not many people see this. Again, we've got it for the wet hills. Um, and the first job it went to was on a wet, steep hill. If you watch my previous videos, you'll see me taking away um, stuff with the shears on. So these pads are uh, pads are steel and they're 450s. It honestly will go anywhere. Same with the 57. You can put this machine totally to test. I've seen, me and dad, I've seen it go some crazy places and it never lets us down.
If you're not familiar with Kubota's or if you are familiar with Kubota's and not seen the new model, then this is a total upgrade compared to the even the KX08, what I have. Um, it's just totally different inside. Come have a look. So all this bit down here and the computer screen still makes them the most annoying beeping noises, but there we have it here. It's all a little bit more fancier than it is in my machine. This machine, as you can see, has only got not even 50 hours on it yet, so it is very much a, a newbie. Um, apart from the computer screen and the buttons down here, um, the machine itself, I'm not going to go into it in too much depth because in the next couple of months I'm going to have a full review once I get a wee bit more time in it and I'll do a full YouTube video on it for you guys to see. Because right now, I think UK and Europe are the only ones who have the KX60-5. They've not yet hit America. So maybe if some of you guys are interested in having a look at it. Shop, was it shop before you buy? Try before you buy. You can look at my review before you buy. So yeah, that'll be um, in a few months' time. I'll get that out to you guys. You might notice there's been a wee bit upgrade with the colour on it as well. And I really do like this new colour. Um, I think it's just looking like a little bit more modern, a wee bit of a change to... Um, tell everyone that it's a new model and I really like it. Um, my favourite thing about them, the 6 ton Kubota, is probably the power it has. Um, it can move a hell of a lot of stuff for a little machine and one thing I don't like about it is the accelerate. Every time you jump out you have to, if you've got a tilt bucket on or attachment, you have to jump in and press that button every single time you jump back in instead of just out and in and it works so that is the down point of this machine we'll leave it at that you've met all the machines the six machines you've met the two lorries the two dumpers the pickups and that's the lot i hope you've all enjoyed this video of meeting the fleet i hope you all get yourself a revolution race discount with a discount code because honestly can't recommend them enough and thank you to revolution race for that and always, thanks to you guys for watching, subscribing, the comments and the likes. Comment what your favourite part is, and it can't just be the 143. See you next week, guys.